It's a great Torah portion today called Re'eh. Uh, you know, last year I talked about being yoked to Yeshua, and I had a horse yoke that I showed last year. So last week we we're talking about looking in a mirror. Um, um, in First John three two says, when Yeshua appears, we will look like Him. Did y'all hear that? When Yeshua appears, second coming. We will look like him. So here's what I want to show you. We've been talking about kubats or looking in a mirror. Do I see Jesus Christ? Oh, I see me. <laughs> I see me. But I'm supposed to see Jesus Christ. So I'm not, I, th I look at it like, well, I may not be exactly like him yet, but when he appears, I will look like him. So there's still a work in me that he's doing. So I'll, I'll give you a bombshell quote here. I don't know who it's from. But if you think you've already arrived, you're, you're mistaken. God's still got a work to do in every single one of us that's here. Um, last year, I talked about being yoked to Yeshua. This is a horse yoke. Now, if Yeshua is here, he has a horse yoke on, and there's a bar between the yokes, and you're yoked to Yeshua. So my question is, where, if we're to look like Christ, to mirror Christ, to be yoked to Christ, where were you last Saturday? So maybe I'm talking to the people out there on the internet or on TV, where were you last Saturday? Because Yeshua kept the Sabbath as the seventh day of the week. Where was Christ? Last Saturday, he was in church. If you're mirrored or uh, yoked to Yeshua and he's in church, where should you have been last Saturday? Unless you're half dead, you should have been in church. That's the way I look at it. Um, this all has to do with being born again. How many in here would say that they're saved? Believe you're saved. Raise your hand that you're saved. I believe that. I believe everybody in here um, believes in death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua, Christ. That's, if you believe that, you are saved. That's the definition of being saved. It has nothing to do with works or obeying the law or anything like that. How many in here would say they're born again? Raise your hand. I'll raise my hand. But in this group, I think most of you are born again. Most of you. Most of Christians out there are not born again. Most churches you go to, I even went into church one day, and the usher came. First thing he said to me is, I came through the door, are you born again? I said, well, I think so. <laughs> are you born again so I'm going to talk about Nicodemus he was a Pharisee and he came to meet with Yeshua at the threat of death he could have been killed for meeting with this upstart this new guy this healing people and, and, and Jesus Yeshua rebuked Nicodemus somebody who understood theology and the law and said don't you understand being born again. So I'm going to talk about that today because you might want to evaluate whether you're born again or not. I, I believe most everybody in here is. Ray A, beholder, say, so I pray that you see what's being taught today. And it's not, I do give opinion on some things, but most of the time I'm actually reading to you scriptures. Believe the scriptures that I share with you. Welcome to Yeshua Sabbath Church. Today, today is the Sabbath, a set apart day. And guess who's here? Yeshua's here, right? You assemble on the Sabbath. That's what you do. We pray for Israel as Christians and Jews all over the world. Yahweh, we ask your blessings for the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, for the land of Israel. And the city of Jerusalem. 
Okay. Uh, sometimes when you draw close to the Lord, he will give you a word of revelation. The word I keep hearing is we have dominion, dominion over this earth, and we are the... He's looking to us to decree and declare. That's what I keep hearing over and over. Anybody else got a word? Yes. Along with that, we have been given authority, yes. But he also, I believe he says to ask. So if you have problems being bold, speaking out, and witnessing, you ask for boldness. Ray, behold or see. So it's my prayer that you will see what I'm trying to get across today. I'm being born again. We, are, we know we're all saved, but are we all born again? And then reading from Deuteronomy 11, Isaiah 54, 1 John. And I say, was, was Jesus born again? I got a revelation of this at 3 o'clock in the morning. He did not need to be born again. Okay, and I'll get into that in a minute. Okay, the ne- reason is he never sinned. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Okay, and Deuteronomy eleven twenty six to twenty eight. Behold, see, I set before you today the blessing if you obey Torah, the curse if you disobey Torah. They're both active today because the curse is not done away into Revelation 22. And yes, one is not under a curse of the law if they're doing the Torah. If you're doing the Torah, you're not under a curse, okay? Because Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. And I add, if we are yoked. To him, if we mirror him, if we look like him, First John three two, if we do that, we we are redeemed from the curse of the law. Okay, verse thirty one thirty two. You are crossing the Jordan to take possession of the promised land. This is what's about to happen in about twenty years. He he says, verse thirty two. You shall obey all the commandments of Torah. I added of Torah. All the commandments. So I look at commandments, Torah, um, laws, ordinances, all the same thing. It's what was spoken from heaven. And there's the key to uh, being born again. It was spoken, Torah was spoken from heaven, okay? On top of Mount Sinai by the Lord. Okay, Deuteronomy 12. There shall not be any worship of any idols. God hates mixture. Uh, normally, I don't go to the Sunday church, but uh, because I'm ministering on the Sabbath, I found that it helps me to go hear another pastor sometimes on Sunday. So, because then I can sit back and be ministered to. But th- that's because I'm teaching on the Sabbath, see. So I'm not recommending that for anybody in here because God hates mixture. So I'm sitting there. But I know I'm born again, saved and born again. So I can sit there, and, and then the Lord will reveal stuff to me through his teaching uh, that's, that's, that's good. A lot of it's uh, not good, but <laughs> it doesn't bother me. It used to, at first it did, but it doesn't bother me anymore. Okay, But God hates mixture, so I'm not recommending that. But if that's what you want to do, uh, whatever. Deuteronomy 12, 47, page 2. You shall worship where Yahweh places his name. It's a place that teaches the Torah. And it says, and bring the first fruits of your income. And that's, uh, that's tithes, offering, donations. So I'm just reading what the scripture says here. The, the tithe is dollars. And it's based on your income, I say after taxes. The offering is dollars, food, time, talent. It's several, several things here. Uh, verse 17, do not eat the tithe within your cities. What's that verse saying? What's that verse saying? Do not eat the tithe at your house. That's what it's saying. Do not eat the tithe at your house. That's talking about the first tithe. That tithe, instead of eating it, 
you take it to where you hear the Torah, the church. That's, that's the first type, 10%. And then verse 18, the very next verse says, You shall eat before Yahweh your family and where you learn the Torah. This is talking about the second type. Because on the three feast days, which is unleavened bread, Pentecost, and tabernacles, you're to gather, their Sabbaths, you're to gather, and you eat it with everyone, and then you can use that money to help other people attend. So that's, that's called the second type. Verse 22, you may eat the gazelle and the deer. Both are clean animals. Do not eat the blood. And I'm not getting to, into all the details there. I'll talk about it again in a minute. Then on page 3, see, if people want to deviate from the morals of the Bible and call it their right, don't we see that in all the self-help books around the world, all the Internet teachings around the world? Everybody's got a channel. Everybody's got a blog now. And you can learn all kind of stuff. And some people call it their rights. Their rights to be this way. Or their rights to be that way. And um, I'll, I'll say that the only rights that mankind, mankind has are God-given rights. Those are the only kind of rights that are given to us. And they're specified in the Bible. So if people say, well, I can eat anything that I want. I can be any sex that I want. I can do this. I can do that. If you do anything other than what God says, that is an idol, that is abomination. So when I look at the scriptures that way and uh, talking about idols and stuff and rights, so I've heard it said many times, well, you can, I can eat anything I want. Well, we cannot pray over our food that's unclean and make it clean. Why? You're praying to God to bless the food you're eating. Are you deceived by Satan? You cannot pray over your food and make it clean. You cannot. Why? God calls unclean food an abomination. Is he, gonna, is he going to bless something that he calls an abomination? No, he's not. Deuteronomy 13. This chapter starts out very interesting. It's talking about a false prophet. There are a lot of false prophets, especially right now on the Internet and different places. Basically, the thing about a false prophet is uh, they're given a word that something's going to happen, and it happens. And you call them a prophet because they're, they're predicting the future. And uh, God says, be careful about that, calling just any man a prophet. Because even if God allows it to come true, and it can manifest in miracles, uh, healings, uh, uh, future events that actually happen, and what God's doing is testing your theology. He's testing your walk. He's testing, are you obeying the Ten Commandments? Because when you see a man do something, what you might call supernatural, think, oh, that must be God. When it's not. When it's not. See, he says, uh, the Bible says, and I, in the scripture here, I'll give the scriptures. He says, if that prophet leads you away from Torah, the, the ten laws, the ten commandments, then that he is a false prophet. So are there prophets on the internet selling, buying and selling on Saturday? Yes, there are. So you got to be careful. If you listen to a prophet, watch a prophet, and he's buying and selling on Saturday. And a lot of them do that. Be careful about the Internet. And what God's doing, he's testing your walk because we think we're Miss, Mr. and Miss Holy here doing everything we should. Kind of like Nicodemus. He was a Pharisee. He thought he was doing the Torah the best he could, but he saw these miracles that Jesus was doing, Yeshua, he says, I'm going to go talk to him and say, what does it mean to be born again? So he went to him and asked him a question. And uh, Yeshua rebuked him. He says, don't you know? This wise man in theology, don't you know what that means? And uh, so we'll get to that in a second. But anyway, Deuteronomy 13, 4, Moses says to the people, do not follow that prophet if he leads you away from Torah, the Ten Commandments. 
Uh, verse 10, stone the unbelievers. God doesn't do that today, um, but during nation judgment, he does. So when he brings a sword against the nation like Israel, that's like stoning them, see, in a way, okay? Verse 13, it says, the sons of Belial, that's H11000. I say Satan, the sons of Satan. It's ungodly men who bring ruin. They're saying, well, my religion is the right way to do it. What, what I say works, and 44,000 denominations say that. And there's really only one gospel, and that's the gospel given to Abraham, and that's following the Torah. And then it, I say, do not follow that person. Do not be yoked to him. Do not, uh, I'll show that slide. Do not be yoked to someone who says something different than what the scriptures actually, te actually teach in the scriptures. So go to slides. That's a horse yoke there. So, if my, if my head's here, and Christ's head is here, and where is he today? In church. So where should we be today? In church. That's how I look at it. We're yoked to Christ. And that's a good example of it. Wherever Yeshua goes, that's where we go. We mirror him, kubats. We look like him. And then it gives a... Uh, uh, I'll give a few verses here about being yoked. Uh, see, Paul tells Timothy, who studied under Paul, basically he's talking about being yoked. Uh, and what Paul does, he says, Timothy, listen. He's young. Timothy, listen. I'm yoked to Christ. I mirror Christ. I do what Christ does. So follow me. You, follow, you see that? He says, follow me, Timothy. I, I walk like Christ. And, and if, if you see what I'm doing, he kept all the Sabbaths, then you're following Christ. Okay, so that's the yoke he's talking about. Um, Deuteronomy 14, 1, do not cut yourself for the dead. So this is some other verses here, and I'll talk about tattoos in the handout. It's verse 3, do not eat any abominable thing. Abominable food is food that God says is not food. If it's kosher food, it's okay to eat it. But if it's any other kinds of food, you're not to eat it. So what about pork rinds? You're not, it says in verse 7 to 8 of Deuteronomy, you're not even supposed to touch a dead carcass of pork, a dead pig. You're not even to touch it. Well, what are pork rinds? A dead carcass. You're not even touch pork rinds, much less eat them, okay? That pig, you know what really sounds good is frying up some bacon like a heathen would. Preach! It's got the right hoof, but it doesn't chew cut. Don't eat it. If you want to be good, don't eat it. Eat it. Okay, so on page six, and I know I'm not talking to anybody in here. <laughs> Are you provoking God? To anger by eating bacon in that turkey wrap. You listening out there? Do you believe that God says it's okay to eat that bacon? Do you want God to be angry with you? Do you serve bacon to your children? Catfish? Shrimp? And Isaiah says those who eat pig meat, pig, pig meat will die. Peter says in Acts 10, I've never eaten pig meat in all my life. Deuteronomy 14, 10. This is the scripture. This is God's words. Do not eat catfish, shrimp, clams, or lobster. It's an abomination to God. Abomination means horror, obscenity, outrage, curse, torment, evil, disdain, monstrosity, revulsion, disgusting, loathing. And then it talks about tithing down in verse 22. The first tithe, the second tithe. We've already talked about that just a little bit. Go to uh, page 7. Talking about Deuteronomy 15. There shall be no poor among you. What is the scripture saying there? What is the scripture saying there? There shall be no poor among you. That's because God taught his 
the Hebrews not to borrow money. That's what he's trying to teach. Do not borrow money. If you have a credit card, you, do, you pay it off every 30 days. You do not carry a balance on that credit card. Now, I've carried a balance on the credit card, I admit, but, but at one time what we did is we wanted to get out of debt. Now, emergencies do happen from time to time when you have to use it and carry a debt. But in general, if that happens, ask, you need to repent first if you're going to do it. Lord, please forgive me for doing this, but I, gotta, I got to have this. Uh, it's 100 degrees outside. My air conditioner just quit or, or you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> it could be life or death. That could be life or death for some people, you know. So, so um, But he's saying there should be no poor among you. That's because you don't borrow money, okay? And um, and there are other details there about how we help a brother in need and uh, things like that. Deuteronomy 16. Here it repeats the same commands given in many of the Torah portions that we teach here. The portions that we teach here. He's saying, honor the feast days, Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. And he gives you the, the, the requirements there about eating moths, accounting the omer, uh, no leaven or bread in the house, making a tithe. So you re that's repeated in Deuteronomy 16. So we go to uh, page 8 in the half Torah. I love this verse. It says, all your sons shall be taught the Ten Commandments. What I like about that is, in this kingdom age, all our children will be taught Torah, Ten Commandments. And uh, because I failed in that as, as a parent. And, uh, and they, they shall live in peace. Uh, on down on page 8, uh, I say, In all things we're more than conquerors. How can we be victorious in Christ? And I got a um, thing there about commentary about praying in tongues and taking authority bad thoughts anything that goes against the promises of God over your life anything that goes against those promises though those are bad thoughts and we're to take those thoughts captive another way of exercising authority is you know is stop sinning that's the bi biggest one obey all the Torah and the fruit of the spirit and the problem is most people don't want to change. They like the way they've been doing it for years and years and years. They don't want to change. Brit Hadashah. Okay, this is 3 o'clock a.m. In 2019, I got this word from heaven. I know it was from heaven. The next day was a little one. And a little one is coming up here Tuesday or Wednesday, right? A little one. Uh, and, it's, and I wrote down First John four one six. Do not believe every spirit. So am I to believe what I heard at, at three o'clock in the morning? So you test it against the Bible. You test what you hear against the Bible. Okay. Because there is a spirit of error out there also. So, John three three, Nicodemus. Comes to Yeshua and says, uh, asking about being born. He says, "You must." Yeshua says, to him, "You must be born again." And he's saying, "How can you be born again unless you're come through the womb another time?" He's thinking natural birth. How can you be born again? Well, when you get a resurrected body. The flesh is born once, but the spirit is when the spirit, your body's when you're resurrected as a spirit being. That's a, that's being born again a second time. Okay, and that word in the Bible is G five o nine. It means anothen. It says you must be born from above. Okay, when Yeshua was in the grave, and then 
he was resurrected, the first fruits of the resurrection, he was born from above because God did that to Yeshua. He raised him up. He raised him up from uh, That was from above. That was heavenly, okay? That's not fleshly, okay? So, so Yeshua is saying to be born again is to receive this resurrected spirit body. And he goes into all the details there. And uh, we're, we're in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul talks on a resurrected body, a heavenly body. Galatians 4.4. 4. This is what I heard at 3 o'clock in the morning. Jesus was born of a woman and under the law. That's what the verse says. Some people would say, well, that meant he was born a Jew. No, there were Jews that uh, weren't obeying the Torah. Jesus was born of a woman and under the law. Where did the law come from? Heaven. This came from heaven. He was born under the law. Sinless as a newborn baby. Sinless. And I give the verses here that he was sinless his whole life. So, he was Torah observant his whole life. He did not need to be born again. Once you sin, you have to be born again. Okay. He never needed to, he never needed to be saved. He was already saved. He never needed to be born again because... He was already keeping the law, that from above, the resurrected body. When you receive the resurrected body from above, he, he was already doing the Torah, okay? But when he died and our sins were placed upon him, the only way he could be born again was to be resurrected. So then he was resurrected and born again, okay? But before he died, he did not need to be born again. Why? Because he was under the law of the Torah. So in a way, I look at myself, and I'm not bragging or anything. It's just what the Lord's put in my heart. So I do it to the best of my ability. I've been born of a woman, my mama, you know. And uh, in most of my life, I, I really didn't know the Lord or God or Yeshua. But in the past 10 or 12 years or so, or actually longer than that, he's been teaching me who he is. So my physical body is not resurrected or born again yet. It will be born again at some point after I die. It will be born again. So that's the physical body. But I feel like I'm like Yeshua, like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Apostle Paul. In the spirit, we're already born again. Do you see what I'm coming from with that? In the spirit, I'm already born again because I'm doing the Torah. See? I'm connecting it to that which comes from above. That's the Torah, the Ten Commandments. It's only been done once from Mount Sinai. So if you're not doing all the Torah like you should, you may not be born again in the spirit. But if you are, then you're born again. You're definitely saved. You're going to heaven. You'll get a, when you get your resurrected body, you'll be born again at that point. But you may already be born again in the spirit if you're doing the Torah. Okay? And so the way I look at that is, if the Lord shows me something different about the Torah, like today, if he's shown you something different about the Torah today, and you change your theology a little bit, maybe. And you're going to obey that Torah from above, then in the spirit you're born again. Okay. I picked those this week. Y'all have heard of Grapes of Wrath and all that, so I'm going to connect it here a little bit. But Okay, that's what I saw this month. What's that look like to you? I'm just driving down the road. I don't know why I saw that. The sky is totally blue. Totally blue everywhere. No clouds anywhere. And I looked to my left and I saw that. What does it look like? I don't know. Sword. 
1 Corinthians 14, 15, we'll talk about uh, tongues a little bit sometimes. 